Today we're talking about sustainable development. This is a crucial concept. I think it's crucial for the world. But what does it mean? I think our starting point has to be how crowded our world is today. We're 7.2 billion people. The numbers have soared. We're up 10 times since the start of the Industrial Revolution. Billions more people are likely to be added to the world's population in the 21st century. This is making for a very complicated world, a world divided between great wealth and still crippling poverty, a world facing unprecedented environmental challenges. Sustainable development is really two ideas. One is a way to understand this complicated world. How do the economic, the social, the environmental, the political, the cultural factors fit together? And the second aspect of sustainable development is the idea of sensible goals for this crowded, interconnected planet. How do we make the world both prosperous, fair, and also environmentally sustainable so that our numbers and our economy don't overrun the physical planet itself? That's really the aim of the study of sustainable development to understand the world and, of course, to help improve the world. And we need to get into that complexity. Any idea that there is one answer, one simple magic formula, one explanation, one force at work, we have to put that aside. We have to embrace complexity because we are talking about a complicated, interconnected set of relations of a world economy that now spans all parts of the world and connects all people, all businesses, technologies, in flows of trade, finance, ideas, advertising, production systems, but also connects us with the physical Earth in unprecedented ways, humanity actually changing the climate, changing what species survive on the planet, changing the chemistry of the oceans, changing the safety of the air, changing the access and availability of fresh water. It's an unprecedented situation. It's a fascinating situation. Uh, it will be the challenge of your generation. Let's see what we can figure out of all of this and how, through that knowledge, we can do something about it. Have a look at this uh, remarkable piece of technology the maglev in Shanghai, which uh, carries people at speeds of more than 200 miles per hour, more than 400 kilometers per hour, uh, to and from uh, the city and the airport. It, it's a magnificent uh, piece of technology, uh, a product of uh, joint work of uh, major uh, leading engineering companies from Europe and, uh, and those in China. It's been operating for the past decade. It is a kind of model of what sustainability can mean in the future, because if uh, electric uh, trains, these uh, magnetic levitation trains, or fast uh, intercity rail based on electricity are powered by uh, clean electricity, then we have a way of helping people to move, uh, helping uh, goods and services to move in a way that's safe for the environment. And technology is uh, exemplified by uh, the maglev uh, is definitely uh, one way forward. But we also have to realize uh, that uh, not all the world right now is uh, uh, in, in the state of uh, traveling uh, to and from the airport uh, in uh, magnetic levitation. Let's look at a, another remarkable uh, city, uh, another great city in many ways, but crowded beyond belief, uh, the city of uh, Dhaka. You see crowds uh, bustle uh, and uh, actually a kind of transport you can hardly find anywhere else in the world. Uh, I've experienced it. It is astounding uh, to uh, ride in a bicycle a rickshaw or a, uh, one of uh, these uh, buses uh, on this incredibly crowded uh, path. Uh, 
thousands and thousands of, of people uh, walking uh, to and from work, life uh, out on uh, the streets. What are we really seeing here? First, uh, we're seeing one of the most crowded places in the world. Uh, we're seeing a, an example of the incredible rise of global population. Bangladesh is a country now of uh, around 160 million people. That's more than four times the 37 million people in Bangladesh uh, in the middle of the last century in 1950. Dhaka itself is one of the largest cities in the world right now, but think of what's happened. In 1965, Dhaka had about a half a million people. Today, Dhaka has more than 15 million people. You can imagine how the infrastructure has been completely overrun, how transport systems, water systems, sanitation systems, and all the rest are facing unbelievable stress with this kind of population increase. This is also part of the reality of our planet. How do you achieve sustainable development in a very low income, very, very crowded place like Bangladesh, especially taking into account how vulnerable low-lying Bangladesh is to the climate change ahead? So sustainable development for us first is a way to understand these complicated challenges. I think it's useful to think of there being four dimensions to that puzzle. There's the economics, there's the societal dimension, how our communities work, culture, civil society. There's the natural environment, and there's our political or governance systems. How do economic, social, environmental, and governance systems interact. The second way to think about sustainable development is not only as an analytical approach, one that takes a holistic view of society, but also as what we would call a normative or ethical approach, identifying goals for society. Sustainable development urges us to have a holistic vision of what a good society should be. Sometimes people say, well, good society is a rich society. But we know that can't quite be it just to focus on the economics. Uh, if a country is rich on average, but all the wealth is held by very few people and most of the people are poor, I think most of us would say that's not a good society in the sense that we would aspire towards. So social inclusion is a second aspect uh, of a good society, meaning that Economic well-being is widely shared uh, among different ethnic, or religious, or racial groups in a country. It's shared between men and women, so there's gender equality. It's shared among regions of a country, uh, so that there's not just one pocket of prosperity uh, in a uh, sea of poverty. A third aspect of what we would think to be a good society is one that is a good steward of the natural environment. We all know that if we break the physical systems of biodiversity, uh, if we destroy the oceans, if we deforest uh, the great rainforest, we're going to lose immeasurably. If we continue on a path that fundamentally changes the Earth's climate in a way that's unrecognizable for us in the way that humanity has developed, we're going to face grave dangers. So from a normative perspective, environmental sustainability uh, certainly seems right. Uh, if we care about the well-being of our children and future generations. And for most of us, uh, we also care very much how government functions. Uh, people living in places with massive corruption, with lawlessness, uh, where the politicians uh, are not to be trusted, where government services are not fair, uh, where there's massive discrimination, insider dealing, and so forth. This creates a lot of unhappiness. Uh, all over the world, people feel happier and better when they can trust their government. But unfortunately, in many places in the world, uh, people don't trust their governments to be honest, to, to be fair. Uh, even uh, to keep them basically secure. So from a normative perspective, 
we could say that a good society is not only a wealthy society, but is one that is prosperous and inclusive, environmentally sustainable, and well-governed. And our fundamental question will be, how can we take sustainable development as a goal, use our knowledge of the interconnections of the economy, of society, of the environment, and of governance, to think through this crowded 21st century uh, in a world of massive divisions of wealth and poverty, in a world of unprecedented environmental stress, but also in a world of maglevs and many, many other technological miracles. How can we find our way through, through this century to produce prosperity that is inclusive, that is sustainable, uh, and that is according to decent governance with rule of law, transparency, and accountability. There are some very powerful ways forward to meet sustainable development as a goal, uh, a shared goal for the planet.